All right, hello, this is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College, EWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular, the EWD 1100 C Sharp Programming Class, I have decided to do some kind of introductory videos based on, on the book that we're using for the class, that being Murox C Sharp 8th Edition. I'm through the first, first 14 chapters, and unfortunately, I also did chapter 15, but for some reason, the tape was not. So I, I'm going to double check here. Yeah, it's on and it's going. So, so I'm going to go back and redo chapter 15 here, which is on interfaces and generics. And my guess is this will be very short. We're probably talking about 10 minutes. If I do finish it that fast, I may combine 15 and 16 together. So the chapter, as it says, begins by showing you how to use interfaces. Interfaces, as you'll find, are very similar to abstract classes, but there's things you can do in one that you can't do in the other. After we get done, we'll talk about generics. And with generics, you can basically go in and you can build your own type of um, of a C-sharp C collection. Now, normally you don't have to do that because normally the um, ones that are provided by C sharp are good enough but if you want to refine them or whatever you might want to or have to do that so we talk about interfaces then about generics like I said this will go quick I've already said this to you but I've, I drew the picture before <clears throat> if you could imagine let me move this over All right, so imagine you had two classes, a class A and a class B, and now you want to combine both of them into a new class. You can't do this. I want to say this again. You cannot do this. All right, this is illegal. Now, if you had this, if I had here appear class X, all right, and I wanted to be able to to do this, like that, and have class X be the parent of both, both, class A and class B, that'd be fine. There's nothing at all wrong with doing that. All right, it's just one class that's the parent of two other classes. That's okay. All right, but the problem that you can run into with this, and I'm not, I didn't draw this very well, as you can see, is what's called the diamond problem. That's the diamond problem right there, where, again, one class has two different parents, and you end up getting something like this that looks like a diamond shape. You cannot, repeat, cannot do that in C sharp. You can repeat, can do that in languages like C++ and Perl, even though C sharp only allows single inheritance, you can have multiple interface interfaces. Now here's a chart that compares the two. You'll notice both of them provide signatures for properties and methods. Both of them can implement some or all properties and methods. Here's where it starts to differ. 
An abstract class can have instance variables and constants and static variables. An interface can only have static variables and constants, so no, inter no instance variables. And a class can inherit from only one class, be it an abstract or a non-abstract class. But a class can implement multiple interfaces. Interfaces by standard begin with the letter I. So if you've got a class, don't begin a class with the letter I. All right. Notice that product here implements an interface. If we have one class followed by one or more interfaces, the class must be listed first if we do this. So as mentioned here, an interface consists of a set of signatures for one or more methods, properties, indexes, indexers, or events. Starting with C sharp eight and above, you can have default interface members and they show you, or they will, in a little bit later on in the book. Here are some of the built-in .NET interfaces. The one of these I'd use most often would be the iComparable, which allows you to pick, compare two objects. If the first object is considered to be less than the second object, what gets returned is negative one. If the two objects being compared are equal, what gets returned is zero. If the first object is considered greater than the second object, what's returned is positive one. You might also use the clonable, and I believe they use that in here to make a copy of an object. This is only a partial listing of all the interfaces. So to create an interface, it's public interface, but just so you see this, if I came up here to this one that we're working on, this um, the interface with inheritance, if I walked in or came in here and do a, did a right mouse click and chose add and chose new item, one of the ones that will be in here is an interface. Okay, and again, it should start with I. I'm not going to add one, but just so you saw that. Here is an interface that defines one method. Here's another one that defines two methods followed by a property. So you can do a lot of things with them. Again, here's uh, an interface that inherits from other interfaces. That's possible. So here is an example where we have come in here and we've got an interface called iDisplayable and we've given, we said that anybody that implements this interface must have a get display text property. But if you don't declare it in here, so if you don't declare it in here, it uses this default one, but you can override it to make it do whatever you want it to do. Okay, so for instance, this is a to string this is a, a, a price to string with um, currency formatting. So again, with C sharp eight and later, you can add regular non-abstract methods to an interface. I haven't done very much of that because basically because I've used our older versions. Implementing an interface, again, their product is implementing iClonable, their product is implementing iClonable and iDisplayable. Book, the, the class must come first. So book inherits from product, implements iClonable and iDisplayable. These can be in any order. They don't have to be in alphabetic or any other kind of order. So to declare a class that implements one or more interfaces, type a colon, okay? If a class inherits another class, you must include the name of the inherited class before the name of the interfaces. You can also use the IntelliSense in Visual Studio that if you have not yet created the interface, so let's say we did this line right here, and we had, you know, we wanted to make an eye clonable of our own, let's say. All right, when it comes up, you could click the down arrow and tell it to make a stub for you, and it'll make something that looks like this. Very small, but you've got something in there then. 
So they've got a product class that implements the iClonable. So there it is. And you'll notice the key line in here is, where are you? Right there, where they're taking product P2 and they're making it a clone of P1. So basically, they're going to produce the same output. All right. The only difference is they changed the description. So the description for P2 is Python. And for P1, it was R, which was the default. And RDA, PDA, price is the same. You can pass an interface as a parameter. All right. And again, the next thing that's in here is for R generics. And again, generics allow you to work with generic collection. You can develop your own. There are built-in generics. We'll talk about them in a minute. But here, you're taking the list and you're adding to it to make it your own generic. So you can use generics to define a type safe collection that accepts elements of any type. By convention, for the parameter, most people use the letter T, a capital T for type. You don't have to. Here is an example of using it. I'm not going to go into these at all. Even in class, I don't think I will. I already mentioned the iComparable. Here are some other built-in .NET ones. The .NET defines a lot of interfaces. They show you how to implement the iComparable how you can use constraints. So for instance, if you're using, uh, you're creating your own type of list and it has minimums and maximums as far as it, what it can hold, you could put that in there. Here they're showing you how to use that iComparable. All right, and finally they show you how to implement the iEnumerable and how to code an interface that uses generics. That's it, very short. So, we are at 12 minutes. I think what I'll do is I will make that its own lecture. Then I'll come back in just a few minutes, finish up this section by going through Chapter 16. So I'll see you with that lecture in just a few minutes.